Ladies and gentlemen, now we will start our first lecture for the mini tab assistant. The module will be divided into lectures. It includes the following files for download. The course material in PDF. Three mini tab worksheets. Four mini tab projects. Instructional video for the mini tab assistant. Mini tabs assistant guides you through your entire analysis and even helps you interpret and present your results. Step-by-step -step guidance. An interactive decision tree leads you to the right statistical tool by posing a series of questions you need to answer, such as the type of data you're working with and the objective of your analysis. The assistant's dialogues are simple to complete. Steps have been streamlined and the text that accompanies the input fields is accessible and direct. Fields will even dynamically change based on your input. Expert support. When you face a question you can't answer, the assistant provides the information you need to respond correctly, such as the definitions of important terms and illustrated examples that help you understand how the question relates to your own data. Summary reports help you draw the correct conclusions and explain why. They illustrate the answers to important questions and include comments that give your analysis context or and meaning. Diagnostic reports help you further understand your analysis by providing additional detail, such as outliers you should explore and the chance of detecting a significant difference. Report cards verify your analysis by providing assumption checks and identifying any concerns you should be aware of, such as unusual data points and issues with normality and sample size. To access the Minitab Assistant menu, click Assistant, then select the best tool in order to perform your analysis and interpreting the results. To access Gauge R and R study, choose Assistant then click Measurement Systems Analysis MSA. Choose the data type, either measurement or appraisal. Then specify if you will set up data collection for a gauge R and R analysis, click on gauge R and R worksheet. Or to analyze the data from your design, click on gauge R and R study, crossed. Now, we will perform an exercise to analyze the gauge R and R data using Minitab Assistant to test how effectively and reliably the new tool measures what we want it to measure. The analysis will evaluate whether different people who use the tool, the gauge, reach the same conclusion, reproducibility, and do it consistently, repeatability. You can download the completed worksheet from resources and turn to the assistant and mini tab statistical software. Start by selecting assistant then Measurement Systems Analysis from the menu and perform the analysis. The summary report gives you the bottom line about how well the new measurement system works. Please state down your comments. Please pause the lecture and solve the exercise. We can follow the assistant's decision tree to the Analyze Data option. Enter operators for operators, parts for parts, and score for measurements. 
Before we press OK, though, we need to tell the assistant how to estimate process variation. When gauge R and R is performed in a manufacturing context, Historic data about the amount of variation in the output of the process being studied is usually available. Since this is the first time we're analyzing the performance of the new tool for measuring the quality of resident supervision. We don't have an historical standard deviation, so we will tell the assistant to estimate the variation from the data we are analyzing. The assistant also asks for an upper or lower specification limit or tolerance width, which is the distance from the upper specification limit to the lower specification limit. Meditab uses this to calculate percent tolerance, an optional statistic used to determine whether the measurement system can adequately sort good from bad parts, or in this case, good from bad supervision. For the sake of this example, let's say in designing the instrument you have selected a level of 5 as a minimum acceptable score. When we press OK, the assistant analyzes the data and presents a summary report, variation report, and the report card for its analysis. The summary report gives us the bottom line about how well the new measurement system works. The first item we see is a bar graph that answers the question, can you adequately assess process performance? The assistance analysis of the data tells us that the system we're using to measure patient supervision can indeed assess the resident supervision process. The second bar graph answers the question can you sort good parts from bad? In this case, we're evaluating patient supervision rather than parts, but the analysis shows that the system is able to distinguish charts that indicate acceptable resident supervision from those that do not. For both of these charts, less than 10% of the observed variation in the data could be attributed to the measurement system itself. A very good result. Please check the mini tab project gauge underscore resident underscore supervision dot mpx for the complete exercise solution and the resources. To access the capability analysis using mini tab assistant, please choose assistant, then choose the capability analysis. The assistant presents you with simple decision tree that will guide you to the right kind of capability analysis. The first decision we need to make is what type of data we've collected, continuous, or attribute. If you're not sure what the difference is, you can just click the data type diamond to see a straightforward explanation. Attribute data involves counts and characteristics, while continuous data involves measurements of factors such as height, length, weight, and so on. With that question settled, the assistant leads us to the Capability Analysis button. If you have attribute or count data, you can perform capability analyses based on the binomial or Poisson probability models. For example, with capability analysis, binomial, you can compare products against a standard and classify them as defective or not. Capability analysis, Poisson, lets you classify products based on the number of defects. Now, we will perform an exercise for the capability analysis using Minitab Assistant. Quality engineers at a company that manufactures floor tiles investigate customer complaints about warping in the tiles. To ensure production quality, the engineers measure warping in 10 tiles each working day, for 10 days. The upper specification limit for the warping measurement is 6 millimeters. 
The engineers know that the distribution of warping follows the Weibull distribution. You can use this data to demonstrate non-normal capability analysis. Please download the mini tab worksheet tilewarping.mtw from the resources. Please pause the lecture and solve the exercise. The first decision we need to make is what type of data we've collected, continuous or attribute. If you're not sure what the difference is, you can just click the data type diamond to see a straightforward explanation. Attribute data involves counts and characteristics, while continuous data involves measurements of factors, so it's pretty easy to recognize that the measurements of tile flexibility are continuous data. Clicking that button brings up the dialog shown. Our data are all in the warping column of the worksheet. The subgroup size is 10, since we measured 10 samples on each day. Enter 8 as the upper specification limit, because that's the customer's guideline. The assistant immediately gives us a warning. Our data don't meet the assumption of normality. When you click yes, the assistant will transform the data automatically, using the box Cox transformation, and continue the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, you'll get the summary report that captures the bottom line results of the analysis, and presents them in plain language. The PPK of 0.75 is below the typical industry acceptability benchmark of 1.33, so this process is not capable. Looks like we have some opportunities to improve the quality of our process. Diagnostic report that assesses the stability of your process and the normality of the data. detailed process performance report are shown with the histogram of transformed data. Finally, the report card prevents us from overlooking issues that could make the results unreliable. For example, we should collect a larger sample size. The transformed data passed the normality test. As we can see our process is not capable and need adjustments. Once we have made adjustments to the process, we can also use the assistant to see how much of an impact those changes have had. The assistant's before, after capability analysis is just what we need. The dialog box for this analysis is very similar to that for the first capability analysis we performed. But this time we can select a column of data from before we made improvements, and a column of data collected after our improvements were implemented. Press OK and the assistant will again check if you want to transform your data for normality before it proceeds with the analysis. Then it presents us with a series of reports that make it easy to see the impact of our changes. The summary report gives you the bottom line quickly. The changes did affect the process variability and this process now has a PPK of 1.41, a vast improvement over the original value of 0.75, and well above the 1.33 benchmark for acceptability. Thank you. And see you in the next lecture of the module.